Hi, Steve here from photomasteryclub.com and in this video I'm going to show you a couple of tips that you can use to help enhance the detail in your landscape images and really bring attention to those important objects in your frame. So before I do that, just to quickly let you know, if you, uh, if you like this tutorial and you want to see lots more like it, um, you know, with heaps of courses and videos inside the Photo Mastery Club membership, then there'll be a link just below this button where you can sign up to become a member. But for now, let's uh, crack on with the tutorial. So there are two main ideas that I want to talk to you about today. Uh, they both relate to enhancing and increasing contrast. Now, the first is increasing micro contrast. So all the small little details that are really going to help uh, make, like, for example, these rocks, it's going to make them really pop. And the second relates to what I call the macro contrast um, or applying macro contrast. So doing like big sweeping uh, changes to the image that will kind of enhance the contrast in a, in a sort of a more broad aspect. So it will make more sense when I show it to you. But first I'll show you the, uh, the sort of one of my favorite ways to, uh, to enhance the micro contrast and the micro details in your shot. And the first step to, uh, to do this is to create a copy of your background layer. So at the moment, I've only got this one layer. Um, if you've already got a bunch of layers, then you'll create a copied merged layer that you can do via the menus. But for now, I just need to duplicate my background layer. And once I've got this background layer, I can choose the filter and then go to other and then choose high pass. So here what we can see, um, the it, it kind of looks really weird. It's like this really sort of just gray um, version of the image with sort of, you can just make out some of the details. Um, but what we're looking for here, you'll, you'll want to choose a radius. So you, you've got this slider and you can change the value of the, uh, you, know, you can change the value that's in here with this slider. Now you'll want to use quite a low value, sort of around about probably between two and four, depending on the resolution of your camera and the size of the image that you're working on. For me, around about three works. And what you're looking for really is to just, you know, keep an eye on the actual image and just sort of bring it to a level where you can just about start to see some of the nice details coming through from those areas that you want to enhance. So I'll leave it there at three, that will do for this example. Now I'll click OK and that will apply that effect to the background copy. Now obviously this doesn't look very good, so what we need to do to, uh, to actually apply this properly is change the blend mode to overlay. And when we do that, it might on first glance look exactly the same as the original background layer, but when I zoom in, you should be able to see, even if you're viewing this on the web, uh, you should be able to see the difference here. So if I disable this layer, now this is the original background layer and when I apply it again you can see a lot of that detail kind of just really pops into view. So essentially this is technically like a sharpening layer but you know I like to use this towards the end of my workflow rather to just use it to kind of selectively pull out some details in uh, some of the important parts that I want to enhance. Uh, so Obviously this layer now, or this effect, has applied itself to the whole image. So the next step in this, uh, in this procedure is to add a layer mask. And then to invert the layer mask with command or control on the keyboard and the I key. So that will turn the layer mask black and now this is uh, completely hidden, uh, this layer. And then grab a white brush and I'll just use 100% opacity for the example. Or for this demonstration you can probably use a, a lower value when you're working on your images yourself just to make it a bit more subtle but for the sake of speed i'll just go 100 percent opacity on the brush and now when i brush with that white brush into the layer mask what we're doing is basically painting this uh, this sharpening this detail effect into the image so i'll just do that in some of these rocks here and hopefully you might need to view this on full screen uh, to actually see the effect. But let me just brush a few more of these areas in 
just to sharpen them up and really make them pop. But when I disable now this layer and then re-enable it, hopefully you can see the effect that's had. So yeah, that's a great way for picking out and making uh, these like really small details look, uh, look sharp and really sort of pop in your image. What I would actually recommend is that you, you know, if you're working on a portfolio image that you're going to spend a lot of time on, you would, you know, spend a lot more time doing this and specifically, you know, create specific layers with different amounts of this sharpening effect uh, and brush it into specific um, areas. You know, so for example, this particular rock in the foreground here might need a different level of sharpening compared to this one over here. Um, so you know you would you would want to go and create a new layer for each um, object that you want to uh, to bring the detail out in separately. Uh, for now, though, like I said, just for the sake of speed, we'll ju we've just done it in this one layer here. Now, the second method or concept really that I wanted to show you was uh, relating to macro contrast. So, whereas this layer here that we just created that really focuses on bringing out the tiny details in objects. What I want to do now is like pick a particular object. So let's take these three or four uh, rocks in the foreground here and really make them sort of stand out and become almost like 3D. So the way that we can do that is by enhancing the contrast of the object as a whole. So if we look at this particular rock here, we can see this edge is kind of quite light. This edge is a bit darker. And similarly for this one here, we've got a light edge and a dark edge. And, you know, again, throughout the scene, we've got like objects based on the lighting in the scene. You know, we've, everything has a light edge and a dark edge. So what we're looking to do is enhance that contrast between those edges. Now you can use a whole you know, array of methods to, to brighten and darken those edges. You could dodge and burn, or you can um, use any <laughs> any other brightening or darkening method, really. Um, I'll show you this with a curves adjustment, because there will be enough to kind of show you the concept, and then you can pick whichever uh, brightening or darkening method you prefer to use. Um, so I'll just show you with the curves, like I said. So I'll add a new curves adjustment layer. And let's start with the darkening. So I'll just create a darkening effect here by pulling the curve down a bit and I need to invert this mask so command or control I on the keyboard to hide this uh, this effect and again with that white brush now because we're brushing with a white brush into the black layer mask I'll then just basically brush this darkening effect into those dark edges that I want to uh, that I want to darken even further so I'll probably just bring the opacity down on the brush a bit this time. So let's go around 50%. And again, I'm probably applying this effect a bit more than I would for real, but you know, for the purpose of the demonstration, I just want to make sure that you can actually see it in the video online. So I'm just kind of exaggerating the effect here. So I'm just darkening what's already dark. So these edges in these gaps here a little bit. Let's make the brush a bit smaller and just get right in here and now we can do the opposite so this one has taken care of darkening the dark edges so let's do the uh, the opposite of that and brighten the bright edges so with a curves adjustment layer this time increase the brightness invert the mask with command or control i and now with that same white brush we're going to brush into the into the, the light edges of the objects that we want to make pop just to bring that brightening effect from the curves adjustment through into just these areas so it's quite subtle as i'm making these brush strokes you might not be able to sort of detect what's happening as i'm doing it but when i just sort of do the before and after you'll see the effect of these two curves adjustments combined so I think that's probably about as far as I can go before it looks like someone's shining a torch on these rocks. We don't want that. Um, so let's just hide these layers now and 
show you the effect of these two combined. So hiding these layers, it kind of, you can see the, uh, the foreground kind of flattens out a little bit. And now when I re-enable these layers, you can see the effect of um, you know that that kind of macro level contrast adjustment on these objects is really sort of making them pop and making them stand out from the scene. And so, just like before with the micro contrast, you know you'll you'll potentially want to uh, to pick your objects that you want to use this effect on, and then work on them individually or independently, I should say. So, you know, you might have one adjustment like I've done here for the foreground. And then if you decide to, uh, to do the same thing for a rock over here, that might require a different level of brightening and darkening, um, and the same over in another part of the shot, you know, so you would gradually build this effect up by repeating the process individually for every, uh, separate area or every separate object in the shot that you really want to make pop and have this kind of 3d effect. And so that wraps up what I wanted to show you today. I hope you find this useful. These uh, these kind of techniques are what I personally use in my workflow, you know, virtually all of the time. And so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and you find it useful. Like I said at the top of the video, if you want to become a member of photomasteryclub.com and get personal one-on-one -on -one coaching from me, as well as access to a whole host of courses, and also our members forum where you can uh, get to know your fellow Photo Mastery Club members. Then just click the link below this video now to, uh, to find out how to go about joining. So I'll uh, hopefully see you soon in the members area.